Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera with you. I am purposely filming this video, which I have uh, woke up the dog and the cow. So you're going to hear some of this. This is what it sounds like. So the reason I'm filming this video, it's a little quick sit down, uh, you know, sit down style video is because I'm answering questions. I have gotten, <laughs> there's Turkey too. I have gotten numerous questions just in the past couple of days. Some are inbox, some are private message, some are even through uh, YouTube uh, in different fashions, all pertaining to, well, two things, and they're both related. Schedule on a homestead and the schedule of milking a dairy cow and its commitment. So, you know, it's getting really late. I mean, it's, it's 10 o'clock. It's, it's, I, my, I'm, I'm about to turn in, everything's about to turn to a pumpkin for me, okay? Uh, and, um, but the reason I decided to film this outside is because, you know, the thing is, is when you enter this lifestyle and start taking on certain um, dedications, it's dedication, commitments, I, you've got to understand. And I will be honest with you, there are times that I struggle. I, I may film something or say something, and then I may, you know, change it up or not say it or, you know, edit it out, which, you know, that puts me in a rock in a hard place because what that does is that pushes me, that pushes me, um, to, um, modify who I am and how I want you to understand what this lifestyle can be for you. Um, and I don't think that really does anybody any favors. The best individual in terms of homesteading advice for me, in general and overall, has by far been Miss Homestead Lady. Okay, we're going to get her in a, here, come, here comes everybody. We're going to get her in a video someday, I promise you, okay? But the reason why she's so good is because she doesn't sugarcoat. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you is, is I'm going to try to, I, I really am going to be as, pleasant as punch as I can, but here it is. If you have a garden and a little backyard flock of chickens, which I've, I've done that, I did that for quite some time, it is not the same level of commitment as, at, as having more chickens, adding dairy goats, it is in particularly nothing compared to having a dairy cow. That doesn't make one place better than the other. What I'm saying is, is point blank, if you are moving from city to country and you have not even attempted to try to get on what would be a milk schedule, if you kind of lo are looking at the camera or the screen or your laptop or whatever going, what is she talking about? Have you tried being on a milk schedule? What that means is, and you know, there are variations to this. If you're thinking about getting a milk cow, first of all, I want to contend to you that you need to be doing a lot of other things before you get any type of dairy animal, even a goat. Okay. You need to have been in the area of working with homesteaders. You need to understand um, basic things about animal husbandry. You might want to jump into having some chickens and a garden and different things like that because while they don't have the same time commitment, it is still a commitment. When you take on a dairy cow, you talk about having a ball and chain. That is the nicest way I can put it. Okay. So you have to understand that you are no longer living the life that you once lived. Even if you were homesteading and, and we, you had chickens and you gardened and you canned and you went hunting and, you know, you're hunting and fishing and loving every day and, you know, you, you butcher, you know, tur your own turkeys and chicken. When you enter the dairy arena, that's another whole level of homesteading that really cannot be described until you attempt to do it, try to do it, or are around it and grew up on it. And every milkmaid out there and man or woman that grew up on a, on a dairy farm said, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, somebody said it. The reason I'm putting it like this is because I get so many questions right now, and I hate, it's going to sound callous for me to say that I just go, Really? 
But then I have to think back and go, you know, I had a lot of questions too. But I took a lot of time, we took a lot of time entering this lifestyle. So when it came time for us to buy her, uh, and when it came time for me to have her, you know, she came, she was bred, and by the time I spent all that time trying to finesse and work with her to ease into a milk schedule, I still, I, I knew a lot about it, and I was ready for it, but you're, you're tied to your homestead. Now, so here was the question. So it was, if I get a milk cow, you know, I've got several, I'm, I'm talking generically because there's several different questions. If I get a milk cow, is she going to have to be bred? Yes. Let me generically put this to you as a woman. A, a, a human being does, uh, does not produce milk typically. <laughs> Some don't. That's why I said typically. When a woman comes into milk to nurse a baby, it's because she had a baby. It's going to be the same thing for a cow. Okay, so you need to understand that. Yes, I breed my cow every year. Okay. When she has the calf, okay, and she freshens and she comes into milk, you are going to have to be home to milk that cow. Whether you hand milk her like I do, whether you buy a milk machine, you need to be there in order to do so. Now, the schedule does change and vary. There's different approaches that people take in order to control this. What I personally do is I keep the calf with her. You've seen this two cycles going on three cycles now. I keep my calf with her. That is because I utilize my calf to um, in, some, in many different fashions. What I do is I milk her in the morning and then I have the calf with her all day till bedtime. And then I separate them f just for the milking. They're side by side, stall side by side. But what that does is that allows me to milk her first thing in the morning. And then, and see, I can't, let me tell you, if you're hand milking a cow like mine, uh, and mine is actually part Holstein, she's part Holstein, part Jersey. Okay, she's a Holstein Jersey cross. And she's young, so my cow is continuing to produce more milk with each calf, okay? So we're not even at her peak yet. And I can tell you just going from her, my first baby to second baby from her, the amount of milk was amazingly more. So I may have to get a milk machine. But what that means is, is if I milk her at seven or eight o'clock in the morning, because one of the questions was, do I have to, do I have to get up at four o'clock in the morning to milk a cow? Well, no, you don't have to get up at four o'clock and milk a cow. I don't. I, I prefer for it to be daybreak and I get up and get the laundry going and get everything going because I know what I'm about to do. I get my other animals settled in first and then I milk her. Okay. See, there's things that you have to do depending on how you're set up, right? <laughs> then I turn the calf on her. And I let the calf stay with her till late, late evening. And then, you know, if it's early on in the milk cycle, I milk again because she is so full of milk. And what I do a lot of times is my secondary milk during the day, I give out to my, to everybody on the farm. Okay, so everybody's getting fed from Miss Bell. But it changes and it varies. This is not about my specific milk cycle. What I'm trying to say to you is if you milk your cow, okay, you got to make a decision. If you choose to want to sleep in, as that was as, how that was worded, if you choose to sleep in to 7 or 8 o'clock and you come out and you milk her, well, that means you're going to be milking her by 7 or 8 o'clock that night. So do you want your mornings or do you want your evenings? Because if you choose to milk her in that fashion, what that means is you're going to be eating dinner early if possible, and then you're staying home because you got to milk a cow. Or that means you're going to be working, working, working. You milk your cow and dinner isn't till 9 or 9.30. I've had many nights like that. What that means is, is you're not running the roads. You're not hitting the beach. You're not going to the gym. You're not doing a lot of these things unless you find some specific time in the afternoon after you've gotten everything caught up and you can carve out a little time. You're going to be home. Okay? So... I'm not saying this to correct anybody. I'm not saying this to, uh, to put anybody in. You know, I'm saying this to put you in the know. Because what I'm really concerned about is there's a lot of people that really want a dairy cow. And they've never milked a cow in their life. Well, I hadn't either. But I had already shifted my lifestyle. So I would suggest to you that you shift your lifestyle. You get used to, holy cow, 
how much time do I really have to spend on my homestead? You know, this is my life and, and what we produce and wh what we promote on our channel is not about spending 20 minutes a day and that's all you do. That's not what we do. Um, if that's what you're looking for, then you need about six chickens in the backyard. I, I, there's no other way to put it. I mean, I'm serious. When you get to this level, uh, and I'm, you know, I still say I'm small fry. Can you imagine running a full dairy? I mean, you know, I know a gentleman that one time was milking 60 jerseys a day. Okay, and he had, of course, he was using milk machines and all of this and all that. He said, I would spend four hours in the morning and I had four hours at night. It was, it, that was, just, that's the life. So look heavily at that commitment. It is a very expensive commitment. I have a message right now, somebody trying to figure out if they can afford to feed a cow. Well, it's going to vary on your situation, what you produce on your farm, how much grass do you have, what's your breed, um, what are you trying, you know, it's going to, a lot of variables will uh, play into that, okay? So, you know, it's not so much about specifically what I do, it's about the shock and awe of what you're getting into. And I don't want you to have any false pretenses because nobody wants to be told the truth. Because, and that's what I was saying about Miss Homestead Lady, she will say, Tara, I love you, but... You know, if you breed your cow here, because I have all these, you know, being a, a, a newer homesteader compared to a lot of these elders that you need to pay attention to, okay, because they've been there and they've done it. And, you know, you think they're hurting your feelings when they say, you really want to do that? Are you sure? And you're like, but this is my dream. That, you know, they're not trying to take your unicorn. They're trying to tell you there is no unicorn and what all is involved. Because what happens is you start to burn out. What happens is, is you spend a lot of money. And then because you become burnt out and because you resent having a lot, spent a lot of money and you're not sure if you should have done this, you might start slack a lacking on what you should be doing. And then you've got a cow with mastitis. Then what are you going to do? See where that leads? Because that is exactly where it leads to. That cow has to be milked every 12 hours whether it's by your hands, by a machine, and even with the, the aid of a calf in co-milking for a time period, I'm telling you, you are tied to your farm. That's the, that's the plain truth. I hope this video helps you out. I hope it answers some questions. I'm sitting out here at 10 o'clock because the reality is there's going to be a lot of nights that you're out here at 10 o'clock. You're not in there soaking in the tub, having the lavender mask on, sipping some tea, watching a YouTube video, checking this out. And even if you do that for five minutes, you got to come out here and check your turkey who's calling in the middle of the night and make sure the dog is okay. And what about Belle? And if you're in milk session, you know, milk, milking time, this is all you're going to do. So I hope this video finds you well. I hope it answers a lot of questions because that is the goal. I just want you to be happy and safe and, you know, go forward and go big on your homestead, but do it slow and do it smart. We'll talk to you soon. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Y'all take care out there.